Here are some voiceover website and SEO tips. My name's Peter Baker from voiceovermasterclass.com. Now, we all know how important a good shop window is when we're out in the high street, and a voiceover's website should be just as attractive and interesting as well. Now, for us voiceovers, it's not as if we're trying to communicate a complicated or esoteric brand or some unusual concepts. People know what a voice actor or talent is. They just need to visit your site to hear your showreels, know a bit more about you, where you're based, know what you're capable of offering at what sort of fee, and how to contact you easily. My own voiceover website won't ever win awards for design or creativity, but it's clean, professional looking, and all those points I mentioned are on the home page, and it's worked very well for me for many years. So let me give you some really good solid tips. And if you haven't got time to watch the video now, please download the free PDF, the links under the video. First of all, your name should be clear and it should be consistent throughout the site and on the titles of all your showreel files. Choose a domain that ideally includes a word that implies voiceover work and it must be .com. No matter where you live on the planet, as a voice artist, English is an international language. It'll help you enormously to .com your site and not be stuck with one that just identifies your own country. There's nothing wrong with having multiple domains, maybe old ones you still pay for, that'll switch to your new main.com website. Ideally, your name should be part of the website domain name. Your name also needs to be in your email address. Some people secure for themselves a wonderful domain name for their website and then ruin it all by continuing to use their domestic email account on Hotmail or something, which just looks amateur. Don't overwhelm the visitor with showreels on your homepage. Just have your greatest hits there with links to further more detailed showreels on other pages. So on my own site, I've got the basics of TV and radio commercials, corporate work, tourism audio guides, training, e-learning, some character voice showreels. Remember that Google, when it's scanning the internet, can't listen to audio files. Google does not own a pair of headphones. However, it can read metadata. So don't miss a trick by posting your voiceover showreels without baking in metadata. For example, in Adobe Audition, this is one of my showreels, and it looks the same as any other showreel or any other piece of audio. The title is up there. However, for the showreel, that's going to go in all sorts of different systems, maybe recognized by all sorts of different bits of software. You need to put the metadata on. Window, metadata, you simply click that, and then just wait a second or so, and on the right-hand side, up pops all this. See, I've already entered all this stuff here. Don't worry about duplicating it in title, artist, album, whatever, and it's all lowercase, all with a dash in between. I mean, it even lets you, on the ID3 tag up here, let you put your photo in as well. Just fill in as much as you like for all the different things. Just fill your boots with different keywords. It all helps. Now, once you've got your showreel sorted out, then make sure they're very clearly laid out on your homepage and easy to play on your website page. Use an up-to-date website creation system like Wix, the one I use. You don't want to ask people to download Flash or some old nonsense like that, do you? You must also make sure it's very easy for people to be able to download both individual voiceover showreels and also with one button, the ability to download your whole set of showreels for their files. Don't forget the H tags. Even if your website's been made by somebody else, it's worth you logging in and checking that these things have been done. Your main key selling phrase with keywords in that you need Google to find first needs to be identified as a tag. It's called an H1 tag. And then the second most important, H2. Look, let me go into Wix editor and show you. So this is the Wix editor where I can make any changes I like to the whole of the website. Uh, this particular piece of text here, I want to make my H1 tag. So click on Edit Text where you can change the words if you want to. And if you've got Wix, you've probably noticed on the right here, you can easily change the fonts and the size and all the other nonsense there. But did you know that you could scroll down? <sighs> Yes, you've probably not seen that. See, I've set mine to H1 there, but it defaults to actually P. So that's the H1. And then if I did the same for down here, that's my H2 down below. 
so it's really important to set the SEO. So once again, it's edit text on the right, scroll down, and you'll see SEO and accessibility. Then don't forget to tag your pictures. Google will sense the file name of the picture and the metadata baked into it. Of course, forget using capital letters. Google doesn't like being screamed at. So everything in the metadata should be lowercase, every word separated by a dash. If you've done the voiceovers of various TV commercials or videos you're proud of, and the client hasn't drowned your lovely voice with music mixed too loud, then maybe you'd like to use it on your website. If you've got permission, put the spots on your site. However, if you're given a link from the client, or you find something on YouTube with your voice on, I would always download it and then upload it again to your own personal Vimeo account and then embed that in case the videos are taken down at any point. Now, when you embed them on your website, make sure that they don't autoplay, even autoplay silently. It just annoys people when they have to wind back to the beginning to watch it again. Make sure there are links to your email in many places on your website. Email links need to be in the header, in the footer, on various buttons throughout. I mean, don't go overboard, but make sure it's easy. The clever thing is that you can find out which email links people are using the most. Let me go into Wix Editor again and show you. For example, the first button on the website, when I click on that, I don't want to change the text. I don't want to change the layout, the design, the animation. It's this one, linked. If I click that, this pops up. So what do you want to link to? Do I want, mm, I think we'll have the email. But on the right hand side, you can see, you can put in what's the email subject and you can edit that however you like. This one happens to say inquiry from website. Remember the punter's going to see it as well. So you can't be too technical about it. But what I've got is a little document here. So I know where on the website the button was clicked that the inquiry came from. So buttons or links that go directly to email is essential. Please don't have a separate contact page that people have to find. And also do not have one of those silly fill in forms with click to show your human boxes, you know, click the squares that have foot crossings. And people hate those things. Don't do that. Once you've got the basics covered on your home page, don't clutter it up with anything else. If you've got specialist services such as video editing, lip sync work, envision recording, audiobook work or anything like that, then give them separate pages. Google always likes websites with separate pages, with a menu system that links everything together. At the bottom of your site, show your official business address and company number, if appropriate, as it looks nice and legitimate for visitors. And you'll need a link to your privacy policy if it's needed in your country. Google likes websites to be updated regularly. So make it a point at least every week. Go into your website, add something else or tweak something. It doesn't have to be on the main page. It could be anywhere in your site, as long as it's all linked together. But Google needs to know that your venture is up and running and is a live company. So regularly add little blogs or full articles if you want, as long as they're on the main subjects of voiceover, audio recording, editing, that sort of thing, audio books. Make sure the keyword density is just right. Don't overstuff. Now, something so many people forget when designing their voiceover websites on a desktop screen is that many busy clients will look up your website on their phone or a tablet. So what does your site look like on a phone? Back to Wix again. Once people have got it happy with their website on a desktop, they either forget about it or they're scared to click this button here. Ooh, switch to mobile, edit your site for mobile. And basically what you do here, you could delete a lot of stuff that just doesn't show up on the little screen. So here I've just got all the very basic things, the TV adverts and all the basic information and the big buttons. All the little stuff is not there at all. And you can simply edit it and whatever you delete in this part here basically will not be deleted on your main site. Now, before you launch your site, try to look at your finished website from the point of view of a casting director, a production company boss, or a direct end client looking for a voice artist. Would they be impressed? Would they know who you are, what you look like, where you live, what your natural accent and voice is, how flexible you are, and how to get hold of you? Finally, SEO for a voiceover website is important, 
but I personally think that you'll get the lion's share of your work by doing solid, direct marketing and using the website as a place to send people to, to find out more about you. You'll get far more work doing this than hoping people will type in the word voiceover into Google and finding you on page one. This just ain't going to happen. But SEO is important and you should do as much as you can for free. Update it regularly. It won't take you long to basically optimize your voiceover website. Well, I hope you found all that useful. If you'd like to know more about voiceover work and in particular marketing, we've got a whole course on it. Check out voiceovermasterclass.com where we have many training courses aimed at all sorts from beginners to advanced video editing, green screen production, advanced audio editing, voice improvement tips and courses as well. Check us out. Thanks very much for watching.